And magandang hapon mga batchmates at classmates. Ang ating featured guest para sa araw na ito ay mula sa College of Economics and Management. Isa po sa ating mga tatak UPLB alumni. Iniimbitahan ko po na bumati po sa ating segment si Enrico Villanueva. Sir, magandang hapon po. Pwede niyo po bang batiin muna ang ating mga masugid na tagapanood? Magandang hapon sa lahat ng mga viewers at listeners ng programang ito. Good afternoon. Maraming salamat sir sa pagpagawan sa aming imbitasyon. Ngayon, unang-una sir, excited kaming malaman yung kwento. Bakit po ba niyo kinuha ang BS Economics during your undergraduate years? Actually, gusto ko talaga maging doktor noong una. Halos lahat naman ng bata pangarap maging doktor. Ang problema na kasi nung high school ako, actually, I was high school sa UP Rural High School. Binigyan kami ng exam na kailangan magguhit ka to test kung very stable yung hands mo. Unfortunately, kasi gusto ko maging surgeon. Doktor na surgeon pa. Pero medyo unstable yung hands ko based on sa test na yon. So, parang ginivap ko na yon. Parang gusto ko surgeon or nothing. So, ayoko na maging doktor. So, sunod ko yung mga ano, maging lawyer sana kasi napapanood ko sa TV, sa mga pelikula, parang galing-galing ng abogado. And I think yung economics can be a good pre-law course. Although medyo nung high school ako, medyo nag ano pa ako kung gusto ko ba talaga i-pursue yung law kasi parang sa law, may impression ako na baka kailangan kang magsinungaling para i-defend yung kliyente mo. <laughs> Pero just the same, sabi ko, pag-iisipan ko na lang ako na college, kung tutuloy ko ba yung law, hindi. But definitely, I'll take economics as a possible pre-law course. Tapos influential rin yung aking high school teacher, si Miss Negri. Honestly, don't know where she is. Pero wherever she is, I'm very thankful to her kasi masyado ako nag-enjoy sa course niya. Economics, parang very different siya from the other social sciences. It was fresh for me. Nag-enjoy naman ako. I think mataas naman natin yung grade ko sa kanya. So, yun. Nagtuloy-tuloy na. Pinili ko yung first choice for econ and my only choice actually. And from then on, nag-enjoy naman ako. At mukhang talagang na-enjoy niyo sir at ginawa niyo na talagang career to, no? Yung yes. Pod. So, in summary po ba, sir, what did UPLB, most specifically, ang College of Economics and Management, taught you in your current field? UPLB in general, I guess, na-embody ko yung honor and excellence na slogan na university. Honor as in trying to be the best that I can be. Fortunately for me, I was able to get the faculty medal for academic excellence. For the college, yun yung pinaka-medal for the highest general weighted average of student within the college. At dinila ko yun kung saan ako pumunta. Pumunta man ako sa graduate school, pumunta man ako sa corporate world, dala-dala ko lagi yun. We will always try to pursue excellence. And then the other thing would be honor. Kasi UPLB taught me to be very idealistic. So I always try to idealistic and also honor-bound. All the situations I've been in, lagi kong tinag-choose na dapat yung integrity. So I've had instances in my life na you're tested. I'd like to say na through all of those instances, I think yung tatak UPLB na sa akin. Dala-dala ko. I'm proud to say na never ako give in to any issues or cases of in my integrity is questioned. So that's the legacy of UPLB to me. Honor and excellence. Sa SEM naman, magaling yung SEM in teaching their students about economics. Even pag dala ko sa graduate school, kung ano may natutunan ko sa undergrad sa UPLB, nagamit ko yun. At lalo ko nagdala yun nung pumunta ko sa corporate banking world. Sa mga iba't ibang banko na napuntahan ko. And even when I was looking for staff, kinakonsider ko yung UPLB. I had staff who came from UPLB. Economics graduate. So basically, on university level, honor and excellence and the idealism, I brought that. And then quality of education, I owe that to my undergrad college, which is College of Economics and Management. Mukhang marami kayong memories talaga, sir. With SEM, ha? Ayan yung maganda dun eh. Talagang babalikan niyo po talaga yung honor excellence natin talaga. And also, syempre, may service pa rin kayong ginagawa ngayon. Ah, syempre. Diba? Hindi mo mawawala yan. So definitely, oh. ang ating talagang honor, excellence, and service. Yan yeah. talaga na. I'm back in SEM kasi I'm paying it forward by teaching in the university. And we are honored to have you, sir. Definitely. So, sir, bago natin pag-usapan yung mga medyo technical terms, no? Pwede niyo po ba munang sabihin sa ating mga tagapanood at sa, sa ating mga fellow alumni and students? Ano po ba ang talagang ginagawa nyo ngayon? Right now, I'm teaching sa Department of Economics. I'm teaching money and banking, which is basically covering workings of ano yung mga financial instruments, ano yung mga ginagawa ng mga financial institutions, paano sila nare-regulate ng central bank, and paano nagkukundak ng monetary policy ang central bank. Yun yung isa ko tinuturo. At yung isa pa, pagbalik ko, nag-introduce niyo ko ng bagong course. It's called Special Topics in Financial Economics. Inuturo ko sa mga sadyante ngayon yung kung paano gumalaw yung mga financial markets ngayon. This is a very popular course kasi there's a lot of interest on how the financial markets work. Kasi unang-una, pera to. Pagkakakita, exciting siya. And a lot of students are really interested like stock trading and some are even doing cryptocurrency trading. So yun, inaalam ko yung mga yun. Yun yung mga ginagawa ko. Ngayon, I've been doing that the past two years. But prior to that, for about 28 years of my life, I was a risk management professional in the banking industry. And I actually ended my banking career 
career, my last banking position was a chief risk officer or an executive vice president at the Australian Resident Bank branch here in the Philippines. As a chief risk officer, ang ginagawa ko naman, inaalam ko lahat yung mga risks ng banko. So, ano ba yung mga risks nila? Yung mga risks na bumaba yung value ng mga assets nila. Risks na yung mga umuutang nila hindi magbayad sa kanila. Yung risks na may mangyaring failures sa uh, operations ng banko. Halimbawa, nagkaroon ng cyber attack o kaya nag disaster na down yung mga systems. All kinds of risks na yan. Yung problema ko as a chief risk officer. So, kaya siguro namutin po ko kasi ang dahing problema sa banko. Pero, yun yun. I've been doing that the past 28 years as I've said in 8 banks. Global and local. Masaya naman siya. Hindi na ako nagbago ng karina. Nagbabago-bago na ako ng bank kasi may mga different opportunities. So, I guess I've led the full life and then, na-reach ko naman pinaka-highest peak would be like the chief risk officer. Abot ko naman yun. So, medyo happy na ako. At this stage in my life, I'm kind of ready to give back to university. That's why I'm here right now teaching. Napakaganda ng sir ha. Isa yan sa very rich yung inyong experience. At the same time, ito yung problema ang ayokong problemahin, sir. Pero, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maganda po yung ano nyo. Maganda po yung inyong tinuturo rin. Kasi very, ano talaga siya, interesting, very practical. At saka, imagine mo, kikita ka pa. Sir, sinabi nyo nga kanina, over 28 years ang inyong experience sa risk management. So, ano po sa tingin nyo yung nag-evolve sa risk management, especially dun sa response ng global financial crisis? Actually, lagi siya nag-evolve continuously. Even ako, yung profession ko, I started that as a market risk manager. Yun yung mga tumitingin sa mga presyo ng mga financial assets, yung mga stocks, bonds, for exchange. Hinire ako specifically and there was a position created for me specifically kasi may isang banko na 233-year-old English bank. It's called Barings Bank na nag-fold up all of a sudden. Imagine, for more than two centuries it's been there and all of a sudden it folded up. Kasi may isang rogue trader in the name of Nick Leeson. This is way back in 1994-1995. Kung ano nung pinagagawa niya sa banko na yun, so may mga false trade siya, tapos yung mga controls sa banko, direct niya. So biglang nag-collapse yung banko. And doon ako nagsimula. Kasi parang all of a sudden yung mga banko, oops, bakit ganun? Bakit? Pwede pala tayo mawala sa isang bigla. So doon ako nagsimula as a marketer's manager. For a long time, I was doing that until actually the Asian financial crisis. I was there just beside the trading room of a local bank. It's called PCI Bank now but it's been bought by BDO. Pero nandun sa trading room na yung peso dollar rate umakyat from 26 to 30 something. Ang laki ng jump. Yun yung mga evolution nun. In my profession, there's a need to measure kung gano'ng potential losses ang pwede mawala sa banko. Ano yung probability na mawawala yun? Kailangan namin i-measure yun. Yun yung ginagawa ko. So medyo nagagamit ko naman yung economics ko and mathematics. Actually, nagagamit ko sila in basic stat. And yung techniques na ginamit namin hindi lang sa market risk. Even for credit risk, yung mga techniques na nakuha namin from market risk, ina-apply namin sa credit risk. And even ngayon sa operational risk, kung paano ma-measure yung potential losses from bank disasters, cyber attacks. I guess yun yun lang yun. Parang yung mga tools of the trade, ina-apply lang from each facets of the profession. So yung quantification, I think that's one evolution. Grabe sir, no? Exciting siya pagpakikinggan mo. Pero grabe yung brain cells na gumagana sa inyo during time mo kailangan, aralin, and very, dapat alert ka rin po, no? Pagdating sa ganitong mga usapin kasi very critical yung inyong trabaho. So, we sal- alert dapat. Thank you very much for sharing your experience and I hope mas maraming estudyante, pero alam na din ang ma-inspire dun sa nabanggit niyo po kanina, no? Ngayon naman, sir, if ever, may we know what strategies do you believe yung pinaka-effective in promoting financial literacy among the general public? Kasi, di ba, ito isa sa mga naging problema din ng Pinoy. Kasi, mm-hmm. of financial literate. So, yeah. ano po ba yung pinaka-effective to promote financial literacy dito sa Pilipinas? Admittedly, yung financial literacy ng mga Pinoy medyo mababa ba. And I'm trying to do my own way. I'm advocating for financial literacy. Specifically, knowing how to manage your own personal finances. The best way really to learn is through a discussion. And fortunately for me, I can do that via the classroom as a teacher. That's my one best way of trying to do it for all the batches of students I've been teaching. So, tinuturo ko yan, your financial literacy from how to manage your money, knowing where to borrow if you need money, how to plan for your life insurance, passing on wealth, inheritance later on, critical illnesses, ano yung mga instruments na pwede mong gamitin. Hindi discuss namin yun. So I think that's the best way. It's a like give and take and real discussion talaga. And it can be personalized. And often when I do that, I put it from the perspective of the audience, which is the students. Ang problema lang doon sa ganun is very limited. The second thing that I try to do is through seminars or webinars. I've done a couple of that in the past two years. Sa mga webinars, medyo mahirap lang kasi wala masyado interaction. Pero mas maganda yan kung audience-based again. Kasi iba't iba yung needs ng, ano ba, iba yung needs ng high school, ng college, ng young adult, and ng going towards senior years na. Ibang-iba yung orientation. Even me, when I discuss it among friends, mga batchmates ko, iba yung needs 
namin ang kesa sa high school or college definitely. Unang-una supposedly mas mayroon na kami dapat pera and assets at our age. Samantala yung iba starting out pa lang. And normally at my age we're talking about preparing for retirement, preparing for health and for pension etc. Yun yung concern sa amin. So dapat ganun. The last platform I'm trying to be able to reach out to the broader public is through social media. I'm quite active sa Twitter or X in discussing relevant issues like VUL insurance. What type of insurance should you acquire? Why do you need this type of insurance? What's the difference between VUL and an investment product? Tapos yung mga investment scams? Kasi yung dami na lululong dyan. And anong danger if basta-basta kakagatin mo lang yung high interest of an unknown bank? I try to do that every now and then. Topical. Halimbawa may isang issue didiscuss ko yun in my social media accounts. Preferably in the classroom institutionalized. Even at high school pwede yung simulan. If not in the classroom several talks. And I think there are many people out there talking about it. And that's good. Siguro ang wary ko lang doon is know whom to listen to. Kasi sobrang dami even in social media. Some of them may not be so reliable. So there has to be some level of discernment. And then next would be through social media as well. The various platforms. Yun yung mga ways on how to teach the populace about financial literacy and ideally audience base. Nakakatuwa yung dapat audience base siya kasi hindi nga tayo pare-pareho ng concerns. Hindi din tayo pare-pareho ng capacity. So maganda nga po na talagang nakakabasa rin tayo ng mga ganito. Yun nga lang kasi nga sir, di ba, ang problema natin, ang daming information na outside. So hindi na malaman ng tao kung ano yung fake at hindi. They have tips para lang malaman nila kung ito ay tama bang advice or hindi. Kasi spe- <laughs> That's a good one. Sa classroom, medyo nag-guide ko sila kasi parang kasi we're also trying to know how to detect a scam. And the way I do it through example, we would discuss with CN Gasa. CN Gasa at one point was engaged in a financial scam. The CN coin, etc. So, did discuss namin oh, bakit ganito mo tomok ang scam to? Ano yung elements niya? Ano ba yung mga too good to be true? Ganun lagi na ano namin mga warnings of, if it's too good to be true, it's probably not true. Pero meron din kasing element of greed in us na kahit alam naman na natin na too good to be true, sige pa rin tayo. And then a little more of warnings, ano ba, why would you invest your money in a platform or a company or a broker abroad na hindi mo naman kilala, bakit mo bigla-bigla i-invest your money mo through that? May mga ganun rin mga sadyante. So it's more of specific and case-to-case. So that's really where you learn. That's why I try to make it current. Whichever is the currently being discussed, I try to discuss it in class. Napakaganda nun, sir. And hopefully, mas marami pa kayong ma-share nitong ganito. Kasi very nakakatakot kasi talaga, honestly. Lalo na yung ating mga medyo senior din na alumni. Yun. And with that, it is very interesting na inyong content creation ay about dogs, finance, and triathlon. So, pwede mo ba niyong i-share sa amin bakit ito po yung napili niyong topics and how can we follow you? Especially those who have similar interests. Outside of finance and economics, I try to be more well-rounded by pursuing this personal interest. And actually, it's a good also icebreaker when I do interviews and basically when I do interviews on human interaction. Uy, may dogs ka pa. So sometimes I'll get the job because of that because the HR also loves dogs. Yon, passion ko lang yon. I breed dogs. I have breed specific kind of dog. Pomeranian, this is a small dog na very furry. They're little dogs but they think they're big dogs. I also show it. I have a kennel which I try to show. I have a blog in blogger.com Perico Kennel but I kind of continue it now through Facebook. Meron ako in both and I've been doing that for about a few years now. Then the other one would be triathlon. At one point in my career imagine the bore ako. In search of challenges and something to be excited about I did try triathlon. That was more than 10 years ago and I'm still kind of doing it now. Although mas mabaga na ako ngayon. <laughs> Maybe it's the age but I still do it and even me even if I don't look like athletic I'm one of the co-founders of a team Endure Multisport. We have presence in social media, Facebook, Instagram, etc. It's my teammates actually who are more athletic. But me, I'm more of the ordinary guy trying to do extraordinary things. So every now and then, I'm like a weekend warrior. Masaya naman siya. And through that, I was able to make a lot of friends. And that's one benefit of having these hobbies. Who would have known I would be friends with chairman of a huge conglomerate in the Philippines? He's a dog person and I got dogs from him. But eventually, he became chairman of a huge group of companies. Yun lang yung mga choice of that little things that you get to know all of these people and the same thing also in the industry in the triathlon and dami ko nakakilala like directors people from all walks of life and I guess that's the interesting about having hobbies and also it completes you and balances you talagang ipapromote natin ang life work balance hindi yes. lang puro work, hindi lang puro saya, di ba? Talagang balance lang. And at the same time, sabi nyo nga, yung hobby nyo naging tulay para maka-network na yes. iba't 
Uh, tao. At the same time, very important to sa inyo kasi as someone na nasa risk management, ba syempre kailangan alam nyo rin yung hindi lang dapat isa ang titingnan mo, kundi parang broader, holistic talaga. Hindi ka pwedeng maging specific lang talaga. So, very, very nice naman po yung... Sir, eto na lang siguro, any tips po sa ating mga fellow alumni on how to have that work-life balance? Kasi definitely, yung mga marami po sa atin, ngayon ay nalulunod na, mutan na nila yung kanilang passion, yung hobbies. Siguro, a little reminder for our fellow alumni. I guess a reminder because I myself was reminded by our God, our Creator. So, I kind of took a break from the fast-paced life of banking. We had a, like a health scare as well. But thankfully, nothing serious but at some point, I was like hospitalized for it. And that made me reassess, okay, I may be doing this career mode so much. I may be enjoying it. I may get paid very well for it. At the end of the day, the most important wealth is really health. And I know that personally. And it's so important that I actually chose not to go back. I took a break for a while from the corporate banking. And what was initially supposed to be a break is now already about more than a two-year break. And I'm actually enjoying it. I'm not exactly getting a lot in terms of money as a lecturer in UP. And I gave up a huge amount of salary. I was like at the peak of my banking career. Yet I gave all of that up. Why? Because at the end of the day, the most important wealth is your health. And I'm trying to live that by trying to go back to my passions, which centers me and gives me rest and makes me healthy as well. So kahit na ang bagal-bagal to mag-swim na ngayon or tumakbo or mag I'm still trying to do it because it's good for me. Thank you very much for that reminder, sir. At saka, you look happy and contented. Alam I yun, hope so. I sure hope so. <laughs> what you're doing and it reflects your aura. So, we're very honored to have you here in Tatak UPLB segment, sir, for sharing your experiences, your notes on the risk management, yung inyong passion, yung inyong hobbies. Thank you very much, sir. Siyempre, hindi ko palalagpasin tong interview namin ang hindi ko ginagawa itong Tatak shoutout. Sir, pwede namin marinig ang inyong Tatak shoutout? I'm Enrico Villanueva, certified Tatak UPLB.